In this video, I want to show you how you can create patterns and backgrounds for your books, printables and print-on-demand. Hello Home Bosses, my name is Nuria Corby from thehomeboss.com. Welcome to my channel, which is all about helping you to make money online. If you create books or printables or even print on demand, the tool that I'm going to show you will really help you create backgrounds, patterns and other types of graphics that you can use to create your products. You may already have heard of AI art. AI stands for artificial intelligence and it's a way to create images using text, also called prompts, to create a completely unique image that is created by a robot or an algorithm. You may have heard of Mid Journey, Dali, Night Cafe and many others, and even Canva has a text-to-image app in build. The one I want to show you today is called CF Spark and it's part of Creative Fabrica. And this tool is part of the All Access subscription on Creative Fabrica, so if you haven't got the subscription, it's definitely worth checking out just to be able to create these kind of images. So let's go to Creative Fabrica. And when you're on Creative Fabrica, you can see in the top menu here it says Spark, so we click on that. And this then shows you all your creations. I've already created some. So I'll show you later what they are, but I quickly want to walk you through the menu here on the left hand side. So create up here is when you want to create something. My creations brings up the page where you have created all your creations and the personal feed is a little bit like when you're on Twitter, you can see your feed or on Facebook. So this is what other people have uploaded. Then there's the community feed, which is uh, more general. There's a prompt book and there's a help center. So the first thing I want to do is go to the help center because this will explain to you exactly what CF Spark is and how you use it. So there's a very helpful video here. And every time you use a prompt and you generate an image that is called generating sparks. So you're creating a spark. This explains a little bit about how you can try out different prompts. A prompt is basically just like an instruction. So if you want it to create create uh, a tree in a forest with a little house with a smoking chimney. You type that into the input box and that is called a prompt. So it's like a, a set of instructions and then the AI will create an image according to your, to your instructions, to your prompt. And then it talks about CF Spark subscription and speed credits. So you will receive 1000 speed credits each month. That means that when you create a prompt, and I'll show you that in a minute, you get put into a list. So there's lots and lots of people on Creative Fabrica creating these and uh, you are basically assigned a, a queue. And the less people are on Creative Fabrica creating these, the quicker your image will get generated. So if there's a lot of people on Creative Fabrica, then obviously it will take a little bit longer because there, there are longer queues. I honestly have found that it's quite fast generally. I haven't had to really get any speed credits because I think that for my purposes it's fast enough. But you know, if you're creating a lot of things, you may want to look into the speed credits. And there's an offer at the moment, I will leave the link under this description, where you can get 5,000 speed credits for just $37. That is a Cyber Monday offer, but like I said, I mean, I don't use it because I find that it's quite speedy as it is, but you never know, as this increases and more people are using it, it may get a little bit slower. And when you have the CF Spark subscription, you can also earn money from your creations. So this is answered here. Can I earn with CF Spark? Yes, you can earn real money with CF Spark. Right now, there are two ways to earn money. So the first one is they have a contest where the best creations will earn up to 100K. You have to read this article to learn more about it. And the other way to earn money from this is that they're working on a model on how to pay for download. So everything that you create, you can then upload to Creative Fabrica and people can then download the same way as they would download any other Creative Fabrica graphics and uh, you then get paid for that. So this is something that is 
being worked on. I don't think that's available right now, but this is really good. I mean, I think this is something that I'm definitely going to check out because it's another way of creating an online income. So I'm waiting to see what they're going to come up with with this, but it looks promising. And then it also says about, can you remove your creations? So yes, you can remove them. You can't make them hidden yet, but I think if you can remove them, that's already very good. So the images that CF Spark creates are completely unique. So they're not copied from anything and they are yours to use. You can download them. So let's try and make some images and I'll show you how you can make images for book covers, for printables, for print on demand. So you could put them on t-shirts or you could put them on mugs. So there's, there's really an endless possibility of items that you could create with your images. So click on create here and this takes you to the page where you're creating your images. So you can see what I've been creating recently and that is because I want to show you how to make patterns and backgrounds for your books and for whatever other products that you want to create. So I tried, as you can see down here, I tried to make gingham pastel patterns in blue, teal and turquoise. That is the prompt that I used and uh, I'm not too happy with them because they look a little bit distorted and then I tried to do some other ones I thought maybe something for a, for a book cover, something for a fiction or science fiction book cover so I tried the prompt cogs and screws engine steampunk detailed ethereal lighting and I got this and I think these could make some really good book covers and I also made these which are ocean bed starfish and shells in a watercolor. I think they make really good notebook covers for example or planner covers or maybe a travel planner or something that's to do with the sea and the beach. So all of these are really nice. I think they would even look good on a t-shirt. <laughs> I think. And um, then I tried colourful watercolour Art Nouveau landscape. So these would work well as a background. So you could import those into Canva and then maybe put a little character in front. I think these images are totally unique, but it is still a good idea to combine them with other elements so that they're even more unique and that way there's more layers to it as well and this one didn't work out so well so you have to really try different prompts and see what comes up. I typed in colourful watercolour Art Nouveau Lady and I'm I'm not too happy with these. These I wouldn't use them but you could try and see if you tweak this prompt a little bit and add some more words. You could probably get quite good results. This one I made because I was thinking of making a gardening planner and I used the prompt illustration of Inside Greenhouse with plants and gardening tools, watercolour art, highly detailed and um, I think they look really good, especially this one here. So I'm just going to show you what you can do with this. So you can click publish and that will then go on to Creative Fabrica. So you have to wait until this until this loads and gets published onto Creative Fabrica so other people can then download this picture and use it. So let's see what else I did um, while this is loading. So then I tried some geometrical pastel repeated patterns. This one is okay I think and maybe this one so you could use it in combination with other things to create your book cover and uh, this one was a fluid watercolour abstract pattern. Again good one for maybe a book that is like a planner or a sketchbook or watercolour book, something like that. And then I tried to make a Christmas cottage illustration with ethereal light and it should say snowing and <laughs> for some reason I mistyped it and it says showing. I think out of all of them I quite like this one. This would make a good book cover maybe for a planner or something and then I changed the prompt a little bit and I got a much better result with these. So these look lovely for maybe cards, for Christmas cards. You could make printables with these. Why not just sell them on Creative Fabrica and on other sites which is what people are doing as well. 
Then I tried to make some backgrounds. So this is a whimsical forest in sunshine, watercolor illustration, and I think they look really good for, for book covers as well, or printables or anything like that. And you can add your own elements. And then I try to make a variation of this and I put a little path into the forest. So again, these would be quite lovely notebook covers. Uh, there's one with mountains and then I put some poppy fields underneath the mountains or in the forefront of the mountain. So, so I'll show you quickly how you can create them. So up here you've got your input box. If you don't click here on the different ratios, you just get a square picture. But I try to use this one here because my products tend to be narrower rather than uh, wider. So if I'm making a book cover, then I prefer this sort of ratio. Um, but obviously you can decide which is good for your product. If you're making um, mugs maybe or t-shirts, then you might want to choose something else. It's completely up to you. But I just show you how I would make a cover, for example. So I would choose this ratio here and then I'd write in my prompt. And this is another really cool thing that Creative Fabric have brought out. If you're struggling with your prompts and you're not quite sure how to word them or what to fill in, then they've got a prompt book. So you can go here and it gives you some good tips on how to create a prompt and how to start. So I find this is really useful and uh, it's definitely worth looking at this before you start and also have a look at what other people have created. So if we go on the community feed here, you can see what other people have created. Some of them are absolutely stunning, but when you hover over them, you can actually see the prompt they have used. So this person has typed in a beautiful white Christmas tree with ornaments, hyper detailed, full length winter time, and so on. A very long prompt. I don't really have long prompts like that. I think that the algorithm works out pretty well what I'm trying to create. So my prompts are usually very short and I'm still getting really good results. So I don't think you have to write a lot of things into your prompts. This person, for example, has hidden their prompt. So maybe if you don't want people to know the prompts that you've used, you can hide them. And I think they've got a stunning picture there. You can also see the ratio of these pictures. So these are square and uh, that's what happens if you don't use any of the other sizes. By default, it uses the square format. This one is the kind of size that I tend to use. So it's a longer size and you can see how beautiful these images are and what people have created. Absolutely stunning. And if I go on my personal feed, I'm not sure whether these are people that I'm following or how they do this, what they base this personal feed on. Maybe it's people I'm following, I'm not quite sure. Probably, <laughs> yes. So you can personalize your feed and just have a look at the pictures that are of interest to you from the people that you're following. So if we go back to create, we're going to type in a prompt. Let's say I want to create a cleaning planner. So basically a planner that helps you organize your household, helps you clean, it's got lists in it. And I'm thinking of either having a pattern on the front cover or maybe a scene, maybe I don't know, let's do something funny. Let's see if this works. So I'm just going to set the ratio to two by three and I'm going to write in mice cleaning a cottage, um, watercolor, whimsical um, illustration. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to click Ignite and this will show you also how long it takes to create these images. So you can see your place in the queue. So we're currently at number 15 and it's going down slowly. And of course, if you get the speed credits, it will, you know, it will go much faster. And I imagine hopefully almost instantly, but we're waiting a little while. So I'm going to speed this video up a little bit because we don't want to just watch this. And now we're in position two of the queue and it should come up very shortly. Here we are. 
So this is what this prompt has generated. It's actually not too bad. <laughs> I don't know what this mouse is doing. It doesn't look like she's cleaning. It's not very clear, nor is this one. This is completely wrong because I don't know what's going on there. And this one has just picked up on the house. So this hasn't really worked for us. So what you would have to do then is to create a different prompt. So maybe mice cleaning inside a cottage or mice cleaning a room let's do that mice cleaning a kitchen illustration household i'm just giving it some tips as to what i'm looking for i'm not sure this is going to work let's try this one so this is slightly better this is very cartoonish but you could use this as a as a planner cover probably um, this one's interesting but I'm not sure what's going on there. I think this looks wrong. This is one thing about AI art. It doesn't always create accurate pictures. Animals sometimes have three legs or six legs or five legs depending on what it is and it's not it's not accurate so it does seem to have problems with certain types of animals as well so i think let's try something different but i think of all the pictures this one would probably be the best one to create a, a cover with and like i said i mean for me it's better to use these things for patterns for backgrounds rather than have the image the exact illustration that you want it's a little bit more hit and miss if you want something really uh, specific then it's better to use an illustrator because AI is not that advanced yet that it comes up with completely accurate pictures but it's perfect for backgrounds and for patterns and things like that let's try something different in this case let's say we want to create a recipe book or something like that so we're going to to look for a background picture so I've used white wooden board background with fruit and vegetables um, and maybe I'll say illustration and maybe for mock-up. So let's see what it does. So this looks slightly more promising, although I don't think we can really use any of them very well. This one is just not very evenly distributed. This one is totally off. And there's this funny writing here because it's probably copied something that had writing in it. And uh, we can't really use this one either. So let's try and get rid of for mocha. Let's see if we have more luck now. So this one is slightly better. It takes about 30 seconds to create all these I found. So this one would be not too bad. You could put the title of the book down here, even though it would be better if we turned this around and maybe put the title at the top, or we could use this one and uh, have the title here. So they're not ideal, but then I haven't spent a lot of time looking at the prompts. I'm sure that, you know, you can get much better results if you take your time and have a look and say you're looking for something and your own prompts are not giving you the results that you want you can go on the community feed here and just scroll and see what you like so if you really like this one for example you could click on it and then you can just download it and use it with your with your Creative Fabrica subscription. So even if you can't create your own prompts in the way that you want them to, to really look, if you're not happy with the results that you're getting, you can browse Creative Fabrica and uh, see what other people have done and, and maybe use them instead. So let's have a look at some more of these. So if I wanted to use a nice background for a book, Christmassy book, you could use this one or if you want to use something for printables, for example, you could make stickers with these or little um, clip art as well. So there's lots of things that you can do with this. Let's actually try clip art just to see if that works. So let's try Christmas clip art. As simple as that, <laughs> we're not even going to put a lot of prompts in. Let's see what it comes up with. So this didn't take long and I can see that this one could be quite interesting. So you've got lots of little clip arts there that you can maybe use to create other things or you could make labels or you could make stickers. I've done this very, very quickly without really putting much thought into my prompts. 
just to show you for this video but if you're using this for your books for your printables for your print on demand then have a look at the prompt book read all about it and uh, create some really good prompts so that you can come up with much better results than these even though i think that some of these results were actually quite good especially the garden one and i'll show you in a minute how you could create a book cover with that the other thing i want to show you is when you go to the help center you've got a link here to the terms of conditions so i really recommend that you look at that because that explains everything on how you can use your images who has ownership of them what kind of license you have so read everything very carefully so that you are using these correctly but other than that i'm really excited about this this is another income stream that we can probably create by creating really nice images that we can then sell ourselves but also to create our book covers and our other products that we're selling Selling. So let me quickly show you how I would use one of my images to create a gardening book cover. So I quite like these two and I think out of both of them I might choose this one. So I go on open. This is how you will download it. So you can download it here and other people can download it as well. So let me just quickly download it and then I will upload it to Canva and I will show you the kind of book cover that you can make with it. So I've uploaded one of my images to Canva and this is the image. So the way you would create your cover, this is just the front cover. So of course, imagine that you have to do your back and your spine as well. So this is just the front cover design and that's the image that I'm going to use. And the way you can then create your front cover is by placing the title of the book over it. And you can play with that and make it um, any title that you, that you want and any font that you think might be good. And if you want the writing to stand out a little bit more, then you could place something behind the writing. So these are different ideas on how you could use this sort of image as a book cover but then you could also use these for printables for uh, print on demand items like mugs t-shirts and if you want me to make more videos about different products like printables or print on demand let me know in the comments i'm very happy to do that for you and uh, yeah this is how i would make my book covers with AI art on Creative Fabrica. There are lots of different AI tools out there, but I think that Creative Fabrica is quite exciting because you can actually also sell your creations on there. I don't know if that's available already, but they're working out a way where they can pay us if we let them use our images. So that's exciting and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to learning more about that. So I think this could be quite exciting for all of us and hopefully that can create another side income. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them below this video and I'll see you again in my next video. Bye bye.